Welcome back to the Crochet Kratos. That's my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we are going to do the lattice washcloth. I love this washcloth. Mm -hmm. I love doing dishes. So I kind of retired our dishwasher even though we still have it and it still works. But I've been hand washing our dishes now for almost a year and I love the act of doing it. I find because the world is speeding up the computer I can just never get away from it. My phone I can never get away from it. But the act of doing dishes actually really makes me feel good. Um, just to be able to get away from the technology and just do something with my hands other than crochet. So this particular dishcloth is only six inches by six inches. So I find it's the perfect size because you know there's some store bought washcloths out, out there that are just way too big and so you put them into the water they become this heavy mess. And then there's some uh, free patterns for washcloths where the stitches are pretty um, loose in the sense that once you get it wet it kind of just like comes apart like a marshmallow. I love this. It's a nice dense stitch and it's a repeating of four rows once we get started and where you stop is basically anyone's guess like because you can decide where you wanna stop and you will find that if you're using your lily sugar and cream balls then you'll find that you probably can get a one and maybe even possibly two out of one ball. So if you're new to the kitchen product kind of idea you need to use 100% cotton. So that could be like your Bernat Handicraft or it could be your sugar, uh, lily sugar and cream. Could also be your peaches and cream that's all 100% cotton. Acrylic yarns like our friends like with them. Um, that we have here um, with the Karen one pound is not a kitchen project uh, product. So once you get that wet it's a completely different monster versus cotton. So 100% cotton is what you wanna do. So this is almost a beginner level um, but I am going to teach it from an easy perspective and we're gonna get started and once you see the repeating steps it's actually pretty quick. Let's begin. So as we look at the pattern it's just the small set of instructions with just a slight edge with the reverse single crochet which is also known as the crab stitch. I'll demonstrate that no problem. We're gonna get yourself started here and the repeating is just rows two through five until the piece measures about seven inches but you need to make sure that you end on a row two or four. So row two is just a single crochet row uh, with the, the front post and the back post being used. Row number four is also the same thing. So just about seven inches ending on a row number two or four. You decide what's gonna work for you and then we're gonna slam this puppy with a border at the end just to kind of finalize it. Let's begin. Grab your hook. It's a five and a half millimeter. A recommended Red Heart Scrubby Smoothie you can use but I am using Lily Sugar and Cream just to be transparent with you today on camera. If you would like to change this pattern it is in multiples of two. So just crochet one, two, one, two, one, two and when you're happy with the width of it um, just stop. So um, just crochet in multiples of two. So let's begin. We're gonna create a slip knot. This is an easy level tutorial today and I need you to chain a total of 26. Remember the hook never counts as one the slip knot. So one, two, three, 25 and 26. Once you have your 26 you're now ready for row number one. So now that my 26 are done or a multiple of two whatever you decided and you can go fourth chain from the hook. So just count back. So one, two, three, go to the fourth and you're going to double crochet there. I always favor the back hump of the stitch unless I say otherwise and I just double crochet there. Now, now that you've done the back hump the rest of the chain will stay upside down and it's like a serpent spine and you're just going to double crochet in each of the chain stitches all the way across. So please double crochet across your chain and meet me on the other side in just a moment. Once you come all the way to the end of your chain just turn around and now we're going to do rows number two through five. Now the next four rows two, three, four and five is the repeat pattern for this whole thing. But when you're done you have to end on either row number two or five. So let's begin row number two now and the two, this two and four, the rows two and four is what creates the density. So you're just gonna chain one and you'll single crochet into the first one and then you're going to do a back post single crochet around this post here. So to do that you just slam the hook in behind, come out to the front and then come out to the other side of that post and push it back. So the hook is coming from the back out to the front and then to the back. So you're just segregating that post and you're gonna pull through and then pull through two and that's a single crochet on the back post. The next one is a front post single crochet. So coming into the side of the post and then back out on the front side yarn over and then pull through two and that's a front post single crochet. So the next one is a back. So just coming behind 
and, and get the next post and push the hook back on the other side and single crochet. And the next one's a front and the next one's a back. Takes a bit of practice what if you're new to this concept maybe a little bit longer but for those that are experienced you can bam that off pretty good. And that's pulling those double crochets forward so that you can have that texture. So you're just repeating this going all the way across. So it's a back post and then front post and then a back post and a front post and you'll do this all the way across and meet me at the other side of this line in just a moment. So I'm repeating the pattern going all the way across. The last stitch here should be a front post, single crochet and then the turning chain is a single crochet right into the chain. Don't you dare go in that space. Go right into a chain itself and single crochet and that's what it will look like. So this is row number two. We're gonna turn and work and do row number three. So row number three and five are always the same. So you're just going to chain up three. So one, two, three and that's considered your first double crochet. So your next stitch is right here where I'm pointing with my middle finger and I am going to just double crochet or sorry double crochet into the, that stitch and double crochet into every stitch going all the way to the other side. So this is setting up the post to be ready for us because in the next uh, row number four we're going to revisit this idea again but the stitch count is slightly different and we'll be talking about that in a moment. So please double crochet all the way across for row number three. So coming all the way across and I double crocheting into the last stitch available to you. Don't, uh, don't be confused. Make sure you pull it out like this so you can see it but there is a stitch right here. That's that single crochet that's on the edge. So if you're gonna end up with a triangle you'll probably not go too far. So it should be a nice flat edge. So you'll turn your work and we'll do row number four together now. In row number four we're going to change the location of where these things are popping out. So last time in row number two we went to a back post immediately and therefore the next one was a front post. So row number four is slightly different as we begin. So we're going to chain one and we'll do a single crochet in the front, sorry in the top of the first one and now this one here is going to be a front post single crochet. See how it looks behind here which it is? So this will make it opposite to give the nice look. So you're gonna do a front post so to come in the side to the side, pull through, pull through two and and now the next one has to be a back post. So you're just, re, um, you're basically doing opposite to what you had done before. So then these will look like they're being uh, like a woven look and it's just how you started. So it's front post and back post and front post and back post and you'll do that all the way across. This is row number four. Now coming to the last one, the last one here is a back post this time. If you recall the last one on row number two is a front post. So not that it really matters but you're following the pattern as you know it and then in the turning chain I need you to put in a single crochet. So don't forget that turning chain and that was row number four. So turning your work and let's do number five. So row number five is the final of the repeat. You'll chain three. You already know what you're doing for this and then starting in the next stitch you're going to double crochet yourself all the way over and this sets you up again for the next uh, rows that will have the single crochet back post and front post. So this is row number five. This is the end of the repeat and then rows two through five is the repeat and we'll talk about that in just a moment because we have to make sure we finish off on our row number two or four once you get to seven inches. So you're just coming all the way across. Just pull it out if you just don't see the stitches and make sure you go right to the very end. So in these double crochet rows you can physically see the single crochet. It's on the ends of these double crochet uh, rows that you have is that you have to go into the turning chain when you go to do that. So this is the end of row number two, uh, or sorry the end of row number five. So you're going to go back now do rows number two through five over and over until you get about seven inches tall and what then you need to do is just either finish off on row number two or four depending where you are in the pattern. So just keep an eye on your counts and eventually you're gonna come to the end. So in this case row number two is my next row and I'm gonna say that it was seven inches. Um, so if you get seven inches and the next time you're about to do what you have to do it could be row number four. So you have to decide. So just chain up one and this is a repeating of row number two. 
So you just single crochet in the first and if you recall row number two was in the back post of a single crochet for a single crochet and then the next one is a front post. And so then this will conclude then off your pattern as you're going if you wanna do that for seven inches. So you can do small stuff like this for little scrubbies or you can make it even bigger for a blanket. It up, up, it's all up to you. It's a great little stitch and this will make the both sides look even. Do you see that? See how it looks even? So their texture is immediately here and here and that will stay, uh, stay the same. So even if it was row number four, you would still have the texture uh, at the edge too. It just, uh, these posts might be at a different location but that's not a deal breaker. So please complete this and I will show you how to do the border in just a moment. So I'm coming up to the last, so that was the front post single crochet and come into the turning chain with a single crochet to finish that off. Now do not fasten off once you're satisfied with the height of your of your cloth. Do not fasten off and we're going to begin to do the border. So the border is just a once around and we're gonna be using the crab stitch. Let's demonstrate that. To do the border, it's nice and simple. You're gonna follow the edge down the sides which is a nice even spread. So you'll just have to eye that out and then come around all the way around. When you go to start the border, do not fasten off where you are but just chain one and you are going to come into the same stitch of where you are and single crochet. So it looks like a regular single crochet but it's gonna be the next one that's gonna start reversing. So instead of moving forward, you're moving backwards. So you, you're gonna go to the stitch before and turn the hook over and go into the stitch before and scoop the yarn and pull through and then pull through two. It's the way you're scooping it that's going to make it reverse. So, so that was the reverse single crochet. So come into the one before, scoop it and then pull through two. So you'll do this in every stitch that you see when there's a stitch and along the sides you're just gonna evenly spread it. And you'll notice that it will provide a little bit of a bumpy texture edge which is what you're looking for in this case. You see that? I think this is one of those stitches that could really have a lot of potential for a lot of other things too. I've done a reverse single single crochet um, a cowl before and a hat and it looked amazing. It's almost like it's uh, when you use this stitch it's almost like it's uh, a conveyor belt kind of look when you use it in sequence. So you're just gonna continue to do that and then in the corners what you have to do is reverse single crochet, chain one and reverse single crochet in the same corner. So we're gonna have to do that when we get back because we only put one into the first one that we started with if you recall. So some people really don't like this stitch but other people don't mind it. It has its purpose and it's fabulous. So here on the last stitch here, so you're gonna reverse, chain one and in the same part uh, section just reverse again and then start moving down. So you're just gonna evenly space it down the side. So if it's buckling, meaning that it's um, pulling up and it's causing it to bowl, to go into a bowl shape, you know, then it means that you're too tight. If it's ruffling out, that means that you're going too slow. Okay, so it would buckle if I went over here and it's pulling it and if it's ruffling, then it means that I'm, I'm just not moving fast enough across the side. So I just evenly spacing these all the way around. So I'm already gonna hit the next corner. So right in the corner itself, you're going to reverse. Whoops. Chain one and reverse. And this straggler, I would go right up over top of it. You can use a tapestry needle to hide more of it but if you go right over top of it, you can probably get away with not doing it. But you will have to tapestry the the final strand anyway. So now I'm just working along the bottom and again just going into the stitches where I see them. So it's only on the sides that you just have to roughly guess where those stitches are. I'll meet you at the end of this round and I'll show you how to fasten off with the tapestry needle. When you get all the way around, I'm exactly where I started. Make sure you chain one and then you're gonna slip stitch it to the beginning. So just going in. It's gonna be a little bit tight. This is a tight stitch. So pulling it through and through. And now what I want to do is that I want to um, pull up a long enough tail 
so that I can throw it through a tap strainer. So just cut this and you're going to pull up on this strand so that it will pop out. Now for the starting strand just in case it um, you didn't hide it as well as you should have and you may want to anyway because you are doing dishes you're gonna put it through a tapestry needle and there's no good side or, or bad side of this project it's double sided. So you're just gonna go up underneath the stitch work so stay away from the edge so don't impede with the edge so you don't see this and pull it back and then a slightly different path going in the opposite direction and then finally third time is a charm. You have to go back and forth a minimum of three times and therefore you can safely cut that to the project and it should never fall out on you. So any tails that you have then you just wanna do that and this would be how you do this particular cloth and it's a really nice idea and it's a great little one that you can take when you're traveling and etc. Have a good day and it's Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at yarnspirations.com. Bye bye.